In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make custom villager traits for Minecraft Bedrock Edition without actually using um, command blocks or anything like that in game. We are going to be making an actual behavior pack that allows us to do this. Um, anyways, step number one is to head right over down to the description and what you're going to want to do there is click on the top link um, and there you can download the sample pack. I've got mine right over here and this is something that I've provided for you and this is going to help you make this pack and make your life a whole lot easier. Anyways, um, once you have downloaded it, this is what you should have this pack right over here. Um, now, as you can see, it's a zip file. And what I need to do is I need to right click on it and then select extract all over here. Um, it, depending on the device you are using, you might not actually have that option. And in that case, you want to download a tiny, tiny program called 7-Zip also in the description, and that will allow you to extract zip folders. Anyways, you can click on extract again and now right over here um, I have the extracted folder as you can see that's a zip folder and this is a regular folder the zip folder we don't need that anymore so you can just throw that away however if you want to do this more than once then I recommend that you just save the zip folder somewhere so that you can extract it a second time um, you know whenever you want to do this again Anyways, here's um, the sample pack, and if I open it, I'm going to be um, just going into this other folder over here, and this is the pack. Um, there's three items in this pack, a folder called trading, there is a file called manifest, and there is a pack icon. And we'll do um, everything that we need to do with all these files from top to bottom, yeah? Um, which means that we're going to be starting off with this folder, trading. You can enter that, and now immediately you're going to see a bunch of files as well as another folder. These files don't really matter um, for us and for this tutorial. So you can just throw these out if you want. Um, the folder that matters is economy trades, as you can see over here. Entering this folder, you'll see a bunch of files that had the same names, pretty much, or something um, close to that. Anyways, um, as you can see, each of these um, is called after a villager profession, um, and then the underscore trades. So, armor trades, butcher, cartographer, cleric, farmer, fisherman, fletcher, leather worker, librarian, shepherd, stonemason, toolsmith, and weaponsmith. Also, the Wandering Trader is in here, and, um, well, that's just because this file is always in here, and um, you can do the exact same with the Wandering Trader as that you're doing with the Villagers. Um, so, now, of course, to make the custom trades. You can select any of these files you want for which you want to make the custom trades. Um, I'm just going to select the Armorer trades. Um, you can select anyone you want. Of course, you can also do multiple ones. You can do all of them. Um, it really doesn't matter. Anyways, you want to go ahead and open this up. And depending on the program you're using to open this up, it might look a little bit different. I use Notepad++, which is a free program you can get from the, um, from the Microsoft Store. Um, anyways, if you want to be able to follow with, along with the tutorial as best you can, I recommend you get that. But you can also open it up with Notepad, Visual Studio Code, um, really any text editor you want. Anyways, um, there is going to be a bunch of things in here, and it's going to look really confusing for you. And, um, well, it's actually a lot simpler than you think. Um, and let me explain everything step by step. Yeah, so um, there's a bunch of trades in here. In fact, all the trades that the armor has. Um, this over here, what I've just selected, this is a trade it can make. Um, and let's look at that. So 
Um, here we have trades. This just lets the program know that it's a trade, yeah? And we don't need to worry about this top area. Then, this is pretty understandable. As you can see, it says wants over here. What does the villager want? It wants coal. Um, how much coal does it want, the quantity? It wants 15 coal. Um, and then, in return for that, it gives. What does it give? It gives you an emerald. How many emeralds does it give? It gives one emerald. Pretty simple, right? Um, so that's the top trade of the armor. Um, it wants 15 coal and it gives you an emerald. That's pretty understandable. And it's the exact same with everything else. Um, so here we go. Um, it wants an emerald. How much does it want? It wants seven. It gives you, what does it give you? It gives you iron leggings. How many does it give you? It gives you one. And it's literally that simple. Now, there are a few more things that I need to explain about this. Um, number one, the max uses over here. This is just how many times you can use the trade before it goes out of stock. And the reward XP over here. Um, this is true and it's a Boolean value, so it can be true or false. Um, and this just means that it will reward you XP for trading with a villager. Um, and you know, if you play Minecraft, then you'll know that whenever you trade with a villager, you get experience. Now, another thing over here is the price multiplier. As you can see, this is a 0.05 and um, this technically means like, you know, when a villager gets out of stock, then sometimes the price will have gone up, right? Um, and that is exactly what this price multiplier controls. Um, next, we also have the total XP required, and that is not your XP, but that is the villager's XP. Yeah, um, and this is how much XP the villager needs to be able to, um, to trade that trade with you. And you might be a bit confused by that, but um, you but you might also know that villagers have tiers. Um, there's five tiers, and every time you trade with a villager, you get XP, right? And every time um, you trade with a villager, the villager also get X, gets XP. Um, and that is when different tiers of trades unlock, right? Um, and these trades are always unlocked, right? Because it requires zero XP. And once you have traded with this villager for a while, if we go down, as you can see, the villager will have 10 XP and you'll unlock the next set of trades right over here. And now that's pretty much what this file is. And now, of course, I'm going to explain to you how you can make the custom trades. So, to make the custom trades, really what you can do is you can change anything you want. Yeah, um, well, you can't really change anything you want. Um, this purple text, you don't want to change that. But the, thing you can, but the things you can change are all these numbers over here. So, 15, 0 0.05, 1, 1, 6, you can change all the numbers. So let's say I want to give the villager 99 coal and it'll give me one emerald. Well, I've just done that. Or let's say I want to give the villager two coal and I want it to give me, um, well, let's keep it reasonable, 64 emeralds for two coal. Well, I've just done that and you can do that with anything. Yeah, so the price multiplier, I can change that to 0 0.01 if I want. I can also change that to 0 0.87. Um, um, you know, you can change that as much as you want. Yeah. I'll just change um, this back. There we go. Anyways, um, other things you can change are the items. As you can see, it wants an item. What does it want? It wants the coal. Yeah, but I don't want to give it coal. I want to give it gold. Yeah, so then Minecraft gold and then the ingot. Um, I want to give it gold ingots. There we go.
I've just done that. Now, um, you might see over here at the item that it says Minecraft colon gold underscore ingot. Also here with the emerald, um, I can do the same thing. Um, what does it give me? I don't want it to give me Minecraft emerald. I want it to give me bread. Yeah, so now this trade is it wants two golden ingots and then for that it'll give me 64 bread. It's that simple. Um, and now let me get back to this. So the way that this is noted um, with Minecraft colon and then the name of the item, also with the underscores, that is called an item identifier. And now sometimes they can differ from the actual item name. Let me give you an example. Let's say you want um, the, 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 the villager to give Let's say you want to give the villager glycerin melon, yeah? Well, that is actually called speckled um, melon, yeah? Um, and that's weird because you wouldn't really know that, would you? Um, so that is why if you're unsure, um, ingot, there we go. Um, if you're unsure about what the item identifier is, then what you want to do is just go straight into Google Chrome or whatever uh, browser you have and then just just look up um, item identifier and then whatever you want. So Minecraft bread item identifier, um, emerald item identifier, gold boots item identifier, anything you want. Um, you can look that up just to make sure that you're doing it correctly. Um, and I think this should be pretty straightforward. You can do this as much as you want with anything. Um, like over here, for example, it you give a villager 36 emeralds and then the villager gives you a bell, right? But that's a bit stupid. Bells are overpriced. I want to pay the villager 8 emeralds and then it'll give me a bell. Well, that's being done. You can literally do this as much as you want, however you want. But there is one very important thing, and let me explain that. Um, so one tiny, tiny mistake can literally screw up this entire thing. Um, let me give you an example of that mistake. Removing this quotation mark over here. The entire document will not work and your custom villager trades won't work. It's very important to have that quotation mark there. So is this quotation mark and this quotation mark. So is this comma. No comma there, the file will not work and your villager trades will not work. Oh, accidentally removed this comma. That's not going to work either. Accidentally put a space behind this six. Well, now the document won't work either. And now I think you can get what I'm going at over here. Um, you really only want to change exactly what you are able to change um, without screwing up the entire document. Because let me tell you what, it is extremely easy to accidentally make a mistake, right? And now let's say um, that I remove a quotation mark or actually that Okay, that's a bit obvious, but let's say I remove this comma, yeah? Uh, import it into Minecraft, and oh dear, it's not working. Well, then I must have made a mistake somewhere. Um, and, well, let's say I load up this file again. Th like, what are the chances that I'm going to be able to find the exact comma that I, that I, that I removed? Like, that's going to be so hard to locate, right? So it's really important that you watch out for that. Anyways, I have now changed everything that I want to change, right? And once I've done that, I can just hit Control S um, to save it or go over to File and save it from there. Once it's saved, you can just exit out of the document and then head on to the next one and change it. Um, and then head on to the next one, the next one, the next one. Change them however you want. Of course, you don't have to change them. I don't want to change these other ones because I'm a bit too lazy to do that. So guess what? I'm not going to. So there we have it. The bulk of the tutorial is over. You have now made your custom villager traits. Now, one thing though, they're not actually inside Minecraft yet. 
Um, for that, we want to go back to over here where we have the trading, the manifest file, and the pack icon file. Yeah, and we were going to go from top to bottom. So we did the trading. That's the bulk. Now we really only need to do the manifest right over here. Um, you can open this up, and as you can see, it'll have a similar format to the villager trades we just did. And now what this manifest file is going to do is it's going to allow you to import this pack into Minecraft. Pretty simple, right? So, once again, uh, you really need to watch out that you don't accidentally remove something. Yeah, and once again, we're going to be editing the file. So, let's start from the top. The name. What do I want to call this pack? Um, it's B64's Cool Custom Villager Trades. There we go. That sounds like a very suiting name. I like that. Um, then the description. What do I want the description to be? Well, um, I have an idea. Anyways, um, that's it. You want to change the name and the description. Both of these things are going to show up when you import the pack into Minecraft. And that way you'll be able to locate it. Make sure that you write it in between these two quotation marks. If it's not in between the quotation marks, the whole pack will not work. If you remove a quotation mark, the whole pack won't work. You get the idea, I think I explained that already. Anyways, um, the rest of the stuff you don't really need to worry about, apart from this over here. UUID, you can see that over there. What UUID means is Universally Unique Identifier. Um, and as you can see over here, this is our UUID. This is our Universally Unique Identifier. And, um, well, because we make this pack, we are going to need to change the Universally Unique Identifier. Um, once it's been changed um, and you import the pack into Minecraft, Minecraft will know that it's uh, that it, that it's a pack and that's that it's a different pack than one that may already be installed. And this will just technically allow Minecraft to run the pack. So um, obviously we need to get a UUID from somewhere. So you can just head into Google Chrome or wherever you want, um, or just click the link in the description. Um, and you want it to redirect you to uuidgenerator.net. There we go. uuidgenerator.net, right over here. Um, this is in the description, um, and it's as simple as clicking copy over here. Now we have a UUID copied. Now we can head back to our manifest file, and then this top UUID, let's remove that and then press Ctrl V to paste in the new one. Boom, perfect, very nice. Now, you might notice that, well, there's a second UUID down at the bottom over here. You want to remove this one as well, then go back to the online UUID generator. Refresh the page, and then copy another one. It's very important that this one is different. Then, you can paste that in as well. Once it's been pasted in, your manifest file is finished. And once again, you can hit Ctrl S to save it, or head over File and save it from there. Then you can click it away. Now we're finished. This is our pack. Um, and you know, it's as simple as that. Now all we need to do is import this into Minecraft. So you can go back over here and make sure you locate this folder. This is the folder in which these three files are stored. What you want to do is you want to right click on this. And just like in the beginning, remember we had a zip file? Well, uh, we extracted that to make a regular folder. Now we want to do the same thing, but not. We want to do the opposite. We want to compress this to a zip file. Again, you might not be able to do this and you might need 7-zip for it. You can click on compress to zip file, and now this pack you can call anything you want. Remember in the manifest file that all I called mine something? Well, I don't remember it. Anyways, um, I think it was something along the lines of it's 64s super cool custom villager 
trades. There we go, that's good enough. As I said, change this to anything you want, this is the name of your pack. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the same as the one in your manifest file. Anyways, we're not actually done yet. What you want to do is you want to right click on this and then go to rename again. Now you want to locate the dot zip at the end over there. Um, now you might not be able to see the dot zip. If you can't, head over to view, then to show and make sure that file name extensions is ticked. Anyways, once it is, you can go over to rename and then just remove the dot zip from the end, just like that. Then you want to replace that with dot mc pack. That is dot mc p a c k. Then um, you can click and your computer will tell you that if you change a file name extension, the file might become unusable. In this case, the file will still be usable and you can just click on yes. Anyways, as you can see, this is now um, a grass icon. It has a grass icon, and that means that it can be imported into Minecraft. To import it, you can double click on it. However, um, something you can also do is right click on it, go to open with, and then select Minecraft. Anyways, once you've selected that, Minecraft will automatically launch and import the pack. As you can see, the import has started, and now we've successfully imported the pack. Now, um, once you've done that, you just want to go over to play, and then select any world in which you want to use this pack. I'm just going to select my redstone testing world. Go to edit over here, then to behavior packs, and then under my packs, you should see the pack you just made. As you can see, it's 64 super cool custom villager traits. Um, as you can see, this is the name you entered into the manifest file, and this is the description over here. Anyways, you can just click on activate, and now you will need to turn off achievements to be able to activate it, and I can just click on continue over here. Now under the active tab, as you can see, it's now active. Um, and once you've done that, you can just go over to play and load up the world. We're in the redstone testing world with the pack active. Here I've got some villagers, and these were already spawned in before I activated the pack. And that means that the pack is not going to work on these villagers. That's very important. You need new villagers that can either be, um, you know, bred up new or just spawned in. Um, you need new villagers for this pack to work. Um, unless, you know, you've had the pack active since day one of the world. But, um, yeah, so if you, if you already had villagers and you just made a new pack, it's not going to work on them. Anyways, we need to work on spawning in an armor, I believe. What is this? That's a toolsmith. What is the workstation of armor? Is that a blast furnace, I think? And then let's grab the villager spawn egg. Here we are. There we go. Let's place the villager in here in the blast furnace. Yes. You like it or not? Did we just... Is this an armor now? Haha! Uh -huh. <laughs> there we go. As you can see, two gold ingots for 64 bread. The trade worked. Um, let's grab uh -huh. two gold ingots for a second. Um, so, what I said earlier, it, it might have been a bit, little bit unclear. Um, so, it doesn't work if the villagers uh -huh. have already been spawned in, but it. Or, or are already active at, at jobs, but if they, but if you assign them a new job after the pack is active, or if they grow up just after the pack is active, like this one, this is also an armor. Oh yeah, let's, let's follow that. Um, this one, the trade is not going to work because it was already an armor. That villager was not yet an armor, and now it is. So it's the sort of pack is working on him. Anyways, let's trade two gold ingots. For some bread. Oh yeah, we're never going to be hungry again. So
So, one other quick thing, um, of course you can download the sample pack in the description as I said in the beginning, but you'll also be able to download the pack that I made in this tutorial, so the one that you guys watched me make. You can use that as a reference pack if you like. Anyways, um, I really hope that you have learned something from this tutorial. Of course, you might have a question, and if you do, feel free to leave that down in the comment section below. Anyways, thank you ever so much for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next one. Bye-bye.